the full screen audible and visible okay then uh, we will start with the topic uh, we are going to learn today about uh, safety guard 30 it is one of the infection of the uh, joint in one of the surgical or medical emergencies that we encounter there are very much few emergencies in orthopedic and among them safety guard 30 is one of them okay so as the name suggests it is the acute infection of joint due to any, any bacterial agent. So, so it is also known as the pyogenic arthritis or septic arthritis. So it is a surgical emergency. Why? The delayed treatment can cause permanent joint damage, deformity, and long-term disability. And if we have delayed in diagnosing, delaying in diagnosis and delayed in treat, delaying in treatment, we will have uh, poor outcomes or the results will be very much poor. So the incidence of the septic arthritis peaks in first few years of life. Okay, and uh, uh, if we see about the if we see about the incidence, fifty percent of the septic arthritis occur in the children younger than two years of age. And the most commonly affected joints are either the hip joint or the knee joint. So in this particular picture, we figure we can clearly see that the the, the person's left knee is uh, swollen, reddened. Okay, which was features of infection, features of inflammation. So, looking about our frequency involved, the uh, heel joint is usually involved in children, and in elders, the joint involved is usually the knee joint. Now, the most cases of septic arthritis occur from bacteria occurring in shedding into the joint. So, any infection within the blood will try to reach within the joint to the hematogenous root. The another mode is the direct inoculation. For example, a person uh, lands up on trauma, trauma to the knee joint. Knee joint is very much superficial. If we can easily feel the median and lateral condyles of the femur, condyles of the tibia and patella. So the knee joint is one of the very much superficial joints. So a person lands up on his knee, uh, there may be superficial ab abrasion. Now this infection from this abrasion may inoculate and go within the uh, knee joint okay or there can be contagious spread from the adjacent osteomyelitis so if you look at this uh, figure there are the roots by which the bacteria can enter the joint so the first one is the hematogenous root so any infection from blood so for example a child has uh, CSOM chronic separative otitis media and the, that infection can uh, from the uh, hematogenous root can reach the joint. So one root is the hematogenous root. The other one is the uh, from the adjacent osteomyelitis. We know that osteomyelitis is infection of uh, bone and bone marrow, and it is most commonly situated in the osteomyelitis. Like most commonly situated in the metaphyseal area. So nearby the metaphyseal area, we have hematogenous, and then we have the surrounding joint. So any from this region can reach to uh, septic arch within the joint and it is also true vice versa is also true so any infection in the now any infection in the joint can again uh, reach into the uh, any infection here can also reach into the metabasal area okay the third is the spread from the adjacent area so for any person uh, for example here uh, um, CSS or any infection, so say it's in the subcutaneous area near the knee joint. So, from the uh, soft tissue, it can directly spread within the joint. Okay, the fourth common root is the therapeutic or the diagnostic or the ER to the For example, we um, a person um, for any diagnosis, uh, so for, for example, we are injecting uh, within the joint. Okay, so any procedures. Uh, done by uh, us within the joint can also lead to septic arthritis. Or there can be a penetrating damage or the puncturing or cutting injury. For example, a person uh, falls upon a sharp object. Okay, so any penetrating wound can reduce the infection. So these are the most high common roots uh, that that by which the bacteria can reach within the joint. And the most common is the hematogenous one. 
So what is the pathology? There is acute inflammatory reaction. Uh, this leads to uh, serous and purulent exudate, and then this exudate uh, they have enzymes. So one is the bacterial enzymes produced from the bacteria. Other is the enzymes produced by our own body. So these two will try and destroy the cartilage. So the erosion of the articular cartilage by the bacterial enzymes and also the bacterial enzymes and also the proteolytic enzymes. So this will cause uh, destruction of the joint cartilage. And remember, this is very, very much rapid. So in contrast to a tubercular arthritis, in uh, arthritis caused by a tubercular joint, for so, uh, microbacterium tuberculosis, the, the, uh, the progress is very much slow. So however, in contrast to the, uh, this is true for each and every biogenic organism, the destruction of the joint or the, the progression of the disease is very, very much rapid. Okay, so this is again the picture. The uh, this is the joint, the articular cartilage, the articular cartilage, the synovial fluid, the this is a synovial membrane. So these are the cells. So when the bacteria invades the invades within the joint, what happens? So one thing is that the thickness of the synovium increases. So the, the thickness of the synovium increases. Now, there are so much the, the the body tries to bring about the Inflammatory cells. So, in acute phase, there will be polymorphic nuclear cells, and <clears throat> later on, monocytes, phagocytes. So, so, this all will come into play. So, there will be uh, thickening of the synovium and invasion of the inflammatory cells. And this all, the the this all will try to destroy the articular cartilage. So, normal the bacteria invades the synovium thickens the cells. This the the bacteria produce the proteolytic enzymes, so the, our body produces enzymes and they, they all will lead to uh, damage of the articular cartilage, okay? So uh, when we talk about the positive organism, and most of the 50% of the cases, it is Staph aureus. So uh, we say that the for orthopedics, the enemy of orthopedics is Staph aureus. So be it in implant infection, be it in osteomyelitis, be it in septic arthritis, so all mean most of the case the positive organism is staph aureus. So the enemy for orthopedics is staph aureus, and we say the friend for uh, orthopedic surgeons is the periosteum. So meaning thereby when we do surgery, when we operate, if we try to be within the uh, periosteum, beneath the periosteum, there is very very much likely that we will damage the uh, underlying nearby neurovascular structure. So just to tell you about that, the, <clears throat> the, the most common positive organism is Staph aureus. And uh, usually in children, there was uh, the incidence of hemophilus influenza septic arthritis was high, but uh, due to the introduction of vaccine. So, uh, if, it, if we, you, we see the national schedule of Nepal, also we have uh, HIV, HIV also included in the PSA pentavalent vaccine. So, because of the, this immunization, the incidence of immobilized influenza has gone very much down, okay? So, age-wise, so without earphone, uh, yeah, audible, better now? Better, sir? So, uh, the positive, now talking about the positive organisms, the, the most common in the neuron, talking about the age group, in the neonates, it is usually the streptococcus, okay? Um, also the gram-negative organisms, in the neonates, it is the streptococcus. And rest in all the groups, the common organism, infants, children, adolescents, and adults, it is the Staph aureus, okay? So, and uh, one particular age group, the adolescent age group, or the adult age group, in which there are chances of uh, sexually transmitted disease, the gonococcus, or the Neisseria gonorrhea is also one of the important positive organisms, okay? So, in uh, neonates, Staphylococcus, in all the other age, age group, Staphylococcus aureus, in IV drug abusers, especially we have pseudomonas or the atypical organism. So these are the positive organisms uh, that cause septic arthritis. Okay. 
the predisposing factor so um, having a, a patient of rheumatoid arthritis who is on a um, long standing drugs which are immunosuppressive drugs or um, many a times the patient is on steroids which is on an immunosuppressive drug and the chances of infection of the uh, anywhere in the body is high so chronic debilitating disorders iv drug abuse immunosuppressive therapy or hiv aids so These all are the foundation predisposing factors which predispose the person to a uh, which predispose to septic arthritis. Remember, uh, in children is it is usually uh, concomitant, really lying along with the septic arthritis. Sorry, uh, with the acute osteomyelitis. But in adults, it is usually the uh, this uh, this factors which which form into role the elderly population. Uh, with uh, any any form of immune compromised state will predispose the person to septic arthritis. And again, remember, in infant it is often difficult to tell whether the infection is started in the metaphyseal bone or spread it into the joint or vice versa. Meaning, thereby, it is very very much difficult to say whether it is. Uh, many times, the septic arthritis and osteomyelitis are. One from infant, so, so both may be present. So it is very difficult to say whether it was osteomyelitis first leading to septic arthritis or it was septic arthritis first leading to the osteomyelitis. So if we look at the joint anatomy, so if this is the high tissue, so there are certain areas in the body in which the uh, metaphyseal area or the thigh or the metaphyseal area is intracapsular. So okay. So if this is the metaphyseal area, and if it is within the joint, so the infection from here can easily transmit towards the within the joint. Okay. So similarly, any infection here can transmit within to the metaphyseal area. So there are certain areas in body in which the metaphyseal region is intracapsular. So these areas are hip joint, the shoulder joint, the proximal radial nerve joint, and the Distal tibiofibular joint, so hip, shoulder, elbow in elbow proximal radial nerve joint, in ankle in ankle distal tibiofibular joint. So these are the four areas in which the infection from the metaphyseal region can easily go into the uh, joint, or infection from the joint can easily come into the uh, metaphyseal region. Okay, so. Talking about organ, I have got a question for you. So, the in infants, the entire epiphysis, but the epiphysis is the bone epiphysis, which is very much cartilage, which is severely damaged. In uh, older infants, again, there is vascular obstruction leading to epiphysial bone damage, but not as much severe as that of the infants. In adults, it is usually confined to the articular area. In some cases, only uh, extensive erosion may be seen. Okay. So what this slide tries to say is, uh, in infants and children, the sequelae of septic arthritis is much more. Now, untreated, the septic arthritis uh, may spread to the underlying bone. Okay, so if it, it, it spreads to the underlying bone, it is called osteomyelitis, or it may burst out to form abscessing sinus. Okay, so. If you remember, remember the diagram that was shown earlier. So, from it in within the joint, it has only two escapes. So one escape is towards the metaphyseal region, causing osteomyelitis. Other is towards the super subcutaneous tissue and skin, forming abscess and sinuses. So, then the long-term sequelae. There are four long-term sequelae. So, with healing, there may be complete resolution and return to normal. This is very, very much rare. And it will be so. It may be possible in say adults with high immune status. So, so otherwise, complete you know, when uh, resolution and return to normal is usually uh, rare, if not managed early. So again, if managed early, complete resolution return return to normal may be present. Okay. So there can be partial loss of the articular cartilage and fibrosis of the joint. There can complete loss of the there can be complete loss of the articular cartilage in bony integrity. And the fourth one is the bone distortion and the permanent deformity of the joint. Okay? So again, remember that one difference I told uh, said about sorry. 
uh, one difference I uh, I have told about difference between the septic arthritis and pyogenic uh, sorry tubercular arthritis. The disease process of uh, tubercular arthritis is slow. The disease process of septic arthritis is fast, rapid. Okay. So another difference is uh, septic arthritis since the uh, since the progress is rapid, it usually leads in bony ankylosis. So meaning there was articular point articular cartilage is fused and no any no any motion of the within the joint is possible. However, in cases of however in case of tubercular arthritis, it is usually the fibrous uh, ankylosis, not the bony ankylosis. So in uh, tubercular arthritis, it is fibrous ankylosis. In uh, pyogenic arthritis, it is bony ankylosis. And the only exception to the rule of uh, I was thinking about the case of tubercular arthritis is TB spine. So if there is uh, tuberculosis of spine, it usually leads to bony ankylosis. However, apart from spine, all the other joints there will be a fibrous ankylosis. Okay. So again, the disease process, the uh, stage of inflammation. So the sinus will be thickened, the and uh, the the inflammatory cells will be within the joints. It will it will be lead to destruction of the articular cartilage, and this destruction will be by uh, the enzymes produced by the bacteria, also uh, the enzymes produced by the uh, normal human cell tissue. So in this figure, all the whole of the articular cartilage is damaged, but if still uh, the joint gap is there, the bone has not been fused, and in this there is a stage of ankylosis. So these are the sequential stages. In case of uh, progression of septic arthritis, if not treated properly. So again, clinical features in newborns: it is usually the septicemia, the child is irritable, it reduces the pH, a rapid pulse, there can be fever, there can be warm or tenderness or resting to movement. In children, the child is usually reluctant to move the joint, then this is called pseudo paralysis, and it is not in pseudo paralysis, pseudo paralysis of the joint, but because of the pain. The child is usually uh, reluctant to move the joint. There can be swimming, swimming, swimming fever. Uh, in all the uh, all the acute features of inflammation, will be infection from inflammation will be there. And in children, in adults, usually the superficial joint, uh, usually the knee, wrist, finger, ankle or toe will be involved. Ankle joint will be involved, and uh, uh, there will be one local tenderness. Again, the movement of the um, nearby joint will be there. Again, one of the most Important differentiating feature between septic arthritis and acute osteomyelitis. So, since joint is involved, there will be no or very, very much minimal, no amount of movement will be possible in the joint in septic arthritis. However, in case of osteomyelitis, some amount of movement of the nearby joint will be possible. Okay, again, the source of infection in infants may be from the umbilical cord, IV. I just say infusion site, fun combined osteomyelitis, AFOM, sorry, CFOM, ear infection. Okay. Uh, similarly, in okay. Um, similarly, in case of children, uh, there can be a septic so a boil or the discharge from the ear. In adults, it is usually the gonococcal infection. Uh, as I have, I have already told. The chances of sexually transmitted disease, gonococcal or chlamydial infection is high. In patients of premature arthritis or on corticosteroids, uh, there is chances of uh, septic arthritis in case of adults. So, okay, on evaluation, we will look at the single examination, lab, diagnostic, excavation, differential diagnosis, and diagnosis. So, uh, we will try to confine our uh, lecture if possible till today. In the diagnosis, uh, the management part, we, if possible, in this slide, or otherwise, uh, in uh, next lecture, I will try to cover if not possible in this slide. So, the history is similar to septic or sorry, osteomyelitis. There will be history of rash or the colon is known, will be present. There will be swinging fever, and the child will be um, unable to bear weight, especially in case of the lower limb. Okay. So the progeny is present more acutely than osteomyelitis and often associated with fever and other systemic symptoms causing a toxic, toxic 
capabilities for the children. And the similar diseases to work or move the affected gene. So if you see, uh, look or feel, there will be localized swelling, there will be signs of effusion, there will be tenderness, localized of temperature and the joint tries to rest in a position of ease, position of uh, maximal joint capacity. Remember in any collection within the joint, any collection within the joint, the joint will try to the joint will try to rest in a position of um, maximum volume so that whatsoever collection will be there, will, be, will try to be contained. So if knee, in knee, it is usually a slight amount of collection. In heat, it is usually section, abduction, and external rotation. The position of the uh, section, abduction, and external rotation. So this is the uh, position in which there is a maximum capacity of the joint and the joint can accumulate, uh, accumulate all the and uh, it can accumulate the collection whatsoever within the joint. Okay? So if we uh, or move, there will be severe pain with passive motion. So in contrast to acute osteomyelitis, in acute osteomyelitis, there will be some amount of motion within the joint may be possible, but there will be no amount of no passive motion will be possible because of the severe pain. So there can be severe paralysis. And uh, we have to uh, again remember, uh, as we have already told, that uh, septic arthritis may be concomitant with the adjacent osteomyelitis. So, also, also we have to exa examine the nearby uh, nearby nearby bone or the metaphyseal area and also other joint tumors within the body, uh, sometimes in case of uh, septicemia. So, a septic foci uh, leading to spread of. Infection all over the all over the body, so there is chances of uh, involvement of multiple joints. Okay, so left handing uh, as usual in case of infection, the double digit count will be raised, the ESR is raised, the CRP is raised, and the blood cultures are usually positive. Okay, now again, the for diagnostic imaging, yes, in all cases, the yes will be normal, uh, however, in late. Um, or uh, in the even the early phase, since there will be a um, uh, collection within the joint, the so soft tissue swelling will be may present. So, if the uh, articular is the disease progressing in the articular cartilage, it has getting damaged, there will be widening of the joint displays and a slight publication of the joint may be present because of the fluid within the joint. And if there is infection with E. coli, there can be present the gas within the joint. Okay? In late, since the joint will articular cartilage will uh, already start to have been damaged, there will be narrowing and will ease irregularity of the joint, and we can sometimes see uh, bony fusion of the uh, adjacent joint. Okay. So if you see clearly in this picture, in this picture, this uh, if you see this hip joint, it is well contained. The hip joint is well contained in within the scapulum. But however, so this is, this is the stabular margin. The hip joint is subluxating laterally, so it has gone. It has gone laterally, subluxating laterally, uh, showing collection within the joint. Similarly, in this uh, this joint, so there we cannot show the epiphysis. Clear epiphysis is shown. No epiphysis is shown. So the bone has been uh, bone has been. Uh, the EB5 is the, the femoral head has been completely completely destroyed in this case. Okay. So if you see clearly the what we have said, there can be increase in the uh, soft tissue swelling. So if this is the soft tissue swelling, it is inflamed or increased soft tissue. Sometimes this may be the only finding in case of early septic uh, arthritis. Or in later cases, there can be destruction of the articular cartilage. So this article, so this, so this was the original lining of the articular cartilage. It has been destroyed here. It has been destroyed here, and even, even some some lining areas are seen in this region. So the articular cartilage has uh, has been destroyed. Okay. So the septic arthritis of me, the the articular cartilage, the joint margin is very very much irregular. The
article cartilage is irregular and the joint is the joint is in a state of uh, being fused. So the fusion has actually still not occurred because we can clearly see the uh, joint state. But however, the articular cartilage has been irregularly eroded over the this way. Again, this uh, is almost uh, reaching to an stage of uh, fusion. Joint line is very much faintly visible, and again, this is the example of septic arthritis hip joint. So, one one of one of the imaging modality was yesterday. The other imaging modality modality photo count. Uh, in early cases, before the yesterday images, uh, there it is a reliable mode of diagnosis. Uh, we can compare the uh, alternate side or the on SSA side for comparison, but the but but remember the the drawback is the ultrasound will, will be able to say that there is there is deep fusion within within the zone. Okay? There is collection within the zone. It will not say whether it is a pus or a blood. So if you do you see your lower or Doppler maybe the vascularity may be seen, but usually it may be it, it, it usually says there is some correction and sometimes you may have to estimate the zone to see to confirm that what is present within the zone. Okay? So in ultrasound there will be thickening of the uh, the space between the capsule and the bone. There will be wide widening of the space between the capsule and the bone. So this is the form of diagnosis of ultrasound graphy. So MRI and bone scanning are rarely used, but uh, especially when the site is posterior side. For example, so the sacral iliac joint. So it is very much, not very much eliminable for ultrasonography. Neither the uh, radiograph, the YFA will be YFA will you know, clearly show the uh, picture. So in uh, regions like for SI joint or external clavicular joint, we can you know, go for MRI or radiomyopathy uh, bone scan. So this is a uh, bone scan in which the left sided clavicular joint has shown increased offset. So, this shows that there is some foci of infection in this area. Okay? So, another, another mode of diagnosis is by aspiration. So, it is usually uh, necessary for diagnosis. So, if, if we see something like this, so you have purulent material, post material coming from, from this. Aspiration, we don't have to uh, confirm the diagnosis. So, this is the diagnosis. And if so, you, you have to do immediate intervention, that is, we have to do immediate arthroscopy and delay the joint. Otherwise, if you delay for the post culture report to come, the defensive to come, so gram scan to come, so we, we will be wait. We, it is very much likely that we will uh, lose the articular cartilage of the joint. Okay? So, that is the big problem. So what we will see in the synovial field, uh, so the appearance is purulent, it is a low viscosity, the amount of white cells will be high in the crystals to differentiate, to differentiate with, with some gout and pseudo gout, and again with gout and pseudo gout, the appearance will be cloudy, but there will be usually urate or pyrophosphate crystal, the amount of the glucose will be low and the, the bacteria will be present. So this is the examination of the synovial field. Again, examination of uh, synovial fluid in terms of in terms of cells. Okay, in this, if you see the contact, the the, the uh the normal is clear yellow with high viscosity and few white cells. Uh, similarly, in this case, what you can see. In septic arthritis, in normal, the cell is less than 200. In septic arthritis, it, it, it goes beyond 50,000. So it is not a, uh, it, it is not the only criteria. It is not one the only the diagnostic criteria. So if the clinical features match, if the biochemical for the lab features match, we will usually diagnose with a septic arthritis. The sound will be usually more than 50,000. In case of uh, others, acute rheumatic fever, it will be 10 to 15,000. Uh, juvenile RA, it will be 15 to 80,000. And as uh, uh, we all, all know that in acute infection or, or the pyogenic infection, the 
and the differential shield are using the polymorphism integral shield or the neutrophils will be high so in the case of the they will be more than 70, 75% will be neutrophils okay so we will try and stop here so i think only 5 or 5 minutes has been left uh, about the differential dimension and treatment we will try to cover up in the uh, next lecture so if you have if you have anything to ask, uh, we have to have some time left. So, so remember this slide. So this, this slide shows uh, differential dimensions uh, between the uh, different types of conditions that can occur within the zone, the differential dimensions. And remember two or three final features that we, I have said to differentiate between the septic arthritis and the tuberculosis arthritis. The septic arthritis is uh, very much uh, rapidly progressing. The tuberculosis arthritis is Slowly progressing, uh, there will be bony engulfing in long term security. There will be bony engulfing in septic arthritis. There will be hyperplane engulfing in tuberculosis arthritis. And if we do the synovial analysis, again, the, the, it will be purulent, it will be torbid. Others are similar, but remember uh, the differentials will be the there will be lymphocyte activity dominant in tuberculosis arthritis. In septic arthritis, there is the neutrophil. And if you send for gram stain, gram stain will be positive uh, in this uh, septic arthritis, but in case of tuberculosis arthritis, it will be AFP stain or the stain will be possible. And you can also again send for uh, the blood culture uh, as well as the uh, culture of the synovial fluid. Again, uh, the differentiating feature, one of the other differentiating feature between septic arthritis and obstruction and occlusion. Acute osteomyelitis. Uh, so both are acute conditions, but comparatively, uh, the septic arthritis is more rapidly progressing. The child is more toxic as compared to that of the acute osteomyelitis. But remember, we do not have, we will not have two types to compare. Okay, so the another important feature will be uh, differentiating feature will be uh, to do the passive range of motion. No or very, very much minimal amount of uh, range of motion will be possible in septic arthritis. However, in case of optimality, some amount of range of motion, say from 5 to 10 degree, will usually be possible in case of acute optimality. And again, uh, in cases of there are few joints within the body uh, in which the uh, septic arthritis and the chronic optimality. Can go from one end to the other end. So the most, most common joint is the hip joint, and then for the other joints are the shoulder joint, the elbow joint in elbow that is the proximal radial nerve joint, in the uh, ankle joint that is the distal tibial tibial joint. Okay. So I am stopping the slide here.